بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصلي عليه I pray everybody is well inshallah uh, Today we're going to continue uh, from page 17 So we're looking at page number Seventeen, inshallah. A guide to the Turuk of Hafs and the variant recitations. So here, on page seventeen, you can see the illustration and the bird's eye view um, of the entire uh, setup uh, of the Turuk. Um, let me see if I can screen share. Um, So here you've got from the top <clears throat> on diagram number one on page number 17. <clears throat> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the top here upon who the how entire Quran was revealed. Okay, they've then got five main companions, okay, start from the right, uh, Sidna Zid bin Thabit, then Ubay ibn al-Kaab, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Uthman ibn Affan, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So these are your five main companions. So they're known as the Ashab Rasul or Sahaba, okay. Then from these Sahaba, you can see some more scholars, okay, Tabi'een. Abu Abdurrahman, Abdullah al sulami And if you look at this, the arrows above them, they actually studied the Quran from all five of the main companions, okay. So they also studied with Zain uh, ibn Thabit, also with Ubay ibn al-Ka'b, also they studied with Sayyidina Ali, also with Uthman and also with Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhum jami'an. Okay, same with Abu Maryam, okay, uh, and same with uh, Abu Amr. Then all of these three were the teachers of Abu Bakr, Asim bin Abi Najud, okay, Al-Kufi. So this is the Imam. So you could, you've got the box around the name of the Imam. Okay, they Rawi, their student was Hafs, according to whom we recite the Quran. Okay, Hafs. And they were also Kufi. Tamam. So when we talk about our recitation, we mention we are reciting according to Hafs An Asim. Af, so Hafs, okay, who took from Imam Asim, who took from three um, teachers, and these three teachers took from the notable five companions of the Prophet. So that's the chain, okay. So from Hafs, the chain divides into two. <clears throat> so Abu Amr. Hafs ibn Sulaiman, they had um, two students. One was Ubaid and the second one being Amr. Ubaid and Amr. Okay, now Ubaid is further, he had a student, Al Ushnani. Okay, Al Ushnani. And then Ushnani had two students, which are Al Hashami and Abu Tahir. Okay. And on the other side, with the Amr ibn Sabbah, okay, they also had two students, Al-Fil and Zara'an. What they are known by, the names are underlined. Okay, 
from each one is underlined. <coughs> okay, now under Hashemi. Okay, so these are the Turuk beneath Hashemi. Okay, Karizini, Khabazi, Mulanji, Abdul Salam, Tahir. Okay, Ibn Ghalbun. So these are one, two, three, four, five students beneath Hashemi. Okay, so this is the chain that's linking them between beneath Hashemi. And then these then are further divided into branches, okay, of 10 Toruk in total. So 10 chains, okay, of Hafs and Asim come through Hashemi. Okay. And let's look at Abu Tahir. So Abu Tahir was the other student of Al Ushanani. So Abu Tahir, if you look at his students, Masahifi, okay, Abil Allaf, Nahrawani, and Hammami. And these four then branch out into 14 chains. These branch out. To 14 chains. Al Fil has two students, Al Wali and Ibn al Khalil. Wali and Ibn al Khalil. Okay, which branch out to also 14 Turuk. 14 chains. Zaran was the fourth name. Okay. Under Zaran, Abu Hassan, Ali Ibn, Ali Ibn Muhammad Ibn Ahmad, Qala Nisi. Okay. And then he had students who took from him. Okay. So Sanjardi, the first one, Khurasani, the second one, Nahrawani, Third one, Hammami. Fourth one, Masahifi. And then, Bakrul Wa'idh. So, underneath them, you also have 14 Turuk. And if you add all of these up, 14, add 14. 28, 10, add 14, 24, 28, add 24, will give you total Turuk for the Riwayah of Hafsa 52. So there are 52 Turuk in total. Okay, so now let me give an example. Um, let's look at the whole um, table. So it makes sense. If you look at it from the top here. So Imam Asim, he had one student. Okay, he had two students, Shu'ba and Hafs. So Shu'ba is the second Kira'a, but we're not discussing Shu'ba. We're only looking at Hafs. Hafs had two students underneath him. Ubaid took from Hafs, and Amr uh, also took from Hafs. Okay, so one chain would be from Asim to Hafs, to Ubaid, okay, to Ushnani, to Hashmi, then Tahir ibn Ghalbun, for example. That's one chain going up, okay? This will be a second chain, a third chain, a fourth chain, a fifth chain. But then underneath Tahir ibn Ghalbun, there's other chains. Under Abdul Salam, there's other, other chains, okay? So when you were talking about Turuk or Tariq, or a chain, we're talking about the individuals that are um, in that sanad, in that chain, okay, from start to finish. And page 18, page 19, and page 20, as I discussed on, I think it was on the first day, um, they're the um, names and the um, books that they have written. If you look at page number 20, it says, it must be noted that some of these books contain more than one tariq. 
the number of turuk in a book depends upon the number of different chains the author has back to hafs. For example, the turuk, okay, the chains in the book Al Mustanir, back to Imam Hafs are nine. Okay, so the fifth tariq from Al Hashimi, okay, the fifth tariq from Al Hashimi, the fifth. As the first, second, third, ninth, and the tenth tariq from Al Fil, see page 50 to 51. The seventh, tenth, twelfth tariq from Zara'an, page 58 to 59. These books only differ with each other over a very small things, okay, very little. <clears throat> a detailed discussion of which is to follow. So there's no point flicking ahead and confusing yourself, okay. Um, so as we go through, um, the Turuk, you'll see. <coughs> Inshallah. So if you look at page number 22, so let's dive into what are the actual differences between each um, Tariq. So now we're going to be looking at the actual um, Turuk and we'll study them now, Inshallah. So, Takbir, <clears throat> Ibn al-Jazari, rahimahullah, writes in Al-Nashr that according to most of the scholars, there was a small pause in revelation during which the infidels started saying, okay, Qala Muhammadan Rabbu, okay, that Muhammad's Lord is displeased with him, okay, so the mushrikeen, the non-believers, started rumors and started saying to the Prophet wasallam that your Lord has left you. Your Lord doesn't want to speak to you. And that was because there was a pause in revelation. So as revelation was coming on a daily basis or every few days, eventually the revelation stopped for a short period. In that period, because there's no new revelation, um, the non-Muslims started slandering the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then eventually, when Allah revealed Surah Duha, so after this pause, the next surah that was revealed was Surah Duha. Okay, what Duha? What Layli Ida Saja Ma Wadda'aka Rabbuka Wa Ma Qala. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions in the surah, "O oh Muhammad, your Lord has neither forsaken you, nor um, has become displeased." He hasn't left you, he's not upset with you, and he hasn't forsaken you. He's not displeased with you. So in joy and gratitude and happiness, at this verse being revealed, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So this is known as takbir. This is known as the takbir. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allahu Akbar after Jibra'il Alayhi Salam recited Surah al duha So the Prophet So Jibra'il completed The Surah وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded Allahu Akbar So, so it's Sunnah To say The Takbir after وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ When the Qari recites recites you should always say takbir after Surah Duha. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also instructed the recitation of the takbir after Surah Duha and the remaining surahs until the end of the Quran. So from Surah Duha all the way to the Surah An-Nas. Although the takbir is not a verse of the Quran, it is an established sunnah transmitted through certain chains of transmission. And we're going to be looking at these chains of transmission, inshallah. Most turuk chains do not narrate the takbir at the start of any surah. However, those who do narrate differ over the type of takbir. Okay? So 
not all of them narrate. The ones that do, they differ upon the uh, type. So there's two types of takbir. The first takbir type is am, okay, and the second is khas. So what is the am? <coughs> takbir am, which is to say the phrase Allahu Akbar, okay, Allahu Akbar, between the ta'awuz, which is a'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim and basmala, which is bismillahir rahmanir rahim. At the start of each surah, except Surah at tawbah So that's entire the Quran, the entire Quran. So after the isti'adha and before Basmala, <coughs> to read Allahu Akbar. And the reason why not in Surah at tawbah because Surah at tawbah does not begin with the um, Basmala. This has been narrated in two uh, turuk, okay, which are in Al Kamil and Al Ghaya. So Kamil and Al Ghaya. <laughs> So Al Kamil and Al Ghaya, um, it has been narrated in these um, uh, two turuk. Now this takbir is called Am um, Common, okay? Because it comes at the start of every surah except Surah Tawbah. So it's Am, um, it's normal, it's a um, on every single um, uh, surah that it comes upon um, in the Quran. So it's not. Specific on any uh, chapter. So, because it comes at the start of every surah except for Surah Tawbah, since takbir must be followed by basmala, takbir is not done at the start of Surah Tawbah because Surah Tawbah does not start with basmala. Number two, al khas. So, what is al khas? <coughs> specific, which is specific to the last um, surah. In the Quran, either from Surah Duha until the end of, uh, sorry, until um, uh, the end of the Quran, or Al uh, Insharah until the end, Surah Alam Nashrah Laka Sadarak to the end. This takbir is called Khas, specific, because it is uh, performed on specific surah, so not the whole Quran, okay, on specific surah from the end of Surah Duha to Nas. The Turuk have differed over whether Takbir Khas should be recited at the start or at the end of those selected surah. Okay, surahs. So the Jibra'il alayhi salam, when he recited Surah Duha to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi salam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, recited and said Allahu Akbar in joy and happiness at the end of Surah Duha, not at the beginning of Surah Duha. So hence why the ulama are talking about starting from um, uh, after Surah Duha. So if it's connected with the end of the Surah, then we will say that uh, Takbir is with the end of Duha. Takbir is at the end of Insharah. So takbir is at the end of Surah Teen, at the end, end, all the way to the end of the Quran. Okay, or we say no, it's in the beginning. So meaning beginning, so it won't be at the beginning of Surah Duha. It will start after Surah Duha. Okay, that takbir is done as the revelation has begun again. So the more Surah came after. According to Al Kamil and Al Misbah, it is recited at the end of each Surah, from Surah Duha until the end of Surah uh, An Nas. Okay. According to Al Ghaya, it is recited at the start of each surah, from Surah In Shirah, okay, until the start of Surah An Nas. Most Turuk do not narrate Takbir at the start of any surah or suwad. Neither Takbir Am nor Takbir Khas. There are three wordings for Takbir Khas, okay, the three different sequence. Number one, Allahu Akbar, 
نمبر ٹو لا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر اور لاسٹ ون لا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر وللہ الحمد اوکے سو دے یو تھری ڈیفرنٹ ویز آف ریڈنگ دی تکبیر اوکے ان دا بگننگ آف دی سور سو نا لیس گو ٹو دی سیکشن آف تکبیر and we'll study the examples so you have a, a good idea on how the takbir should be recited if you all turn to page number 66 <clears throat> if you all look at page number 66 Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can get it back onto the screen. Page number It's amazing anyway, you can see the whole of my screen. Okay, page number 66, inshallah. <coughs> so the first one is, Al-Ibtida Bila Takbir, without any takbir. So you're starting without any takbir. So first way you could recite So now you can see how many different ways you can begin your Quran, how you can recite. The first way is reciting A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Take a breath. So wherever it says Waqf, you're taking a breath. Then Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Waqf, take a breath. الحمد لله رب العالمين so that's the first way so you're stopping after the ta'awudh or istaadha and basmala and then the first ayah the second way of reciting أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقف and then بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين so you're joining the basmala with the first or the first ayah of the surah Tamam? The third way. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim So joining the isti'adha and the basmala together and then stopping. So work after the basmala only and then reading uh, hamdallah. The last scenario is where you don't do no work. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen So you're reading all three together without any stop. Tamam? So this is the first one. Starting the recitation without any takbir. With no takbir at all. Tamam? Okay. Now this was joining isti'adha. Isti'adha or ta'awudh. Okay. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim with basmala. Okay. What about if you're reciting a surah, you come to an end of a surah 
and then you're going to start reading another surah afterwards. So you don't need to do isti'adha again. So the hukm on isti'adha or ta'awuz is when you begin your recitation, you must do uh, read, you must recite A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan al Rajim. And thereafter, you don't need to read it again, just Basmala. Okay? So only Basmala between the Suwar, not Istaadha. So Istaadha is only done in the beginning of your recitation. So now that you've started your recitation, you've done the Istaadha, you've read Surah Fatiha, you've recited other Suwar, and then imagine you're going to join now two Surahs together. So ending of one Surah, beginning of another Surah. How do we do that? <clears throat> yeah. So joining two surahs without takbir. Okay. Al-wasl bayna suratain bila takbir. Okay. Without a takbir, without any takbir. <clears throat> the first scenario, you're going to do waqf. في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر وقف take a breath بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم take a breath وقف الرحمن and then you recite the surah your second scenario is you're going to do work after the first or the last ayah of the first surah. في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر Waqf. Take a breath. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن And then you're joining the basmala with the beginning of the Next surah. And your last scenario, the third scenario is where you're connecting them all <clears throat> without any work. For example, في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر مقتدر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن Okay, so in the third one, you're connecting all of them together. So how? So, Okay, so you're not doing no work there. And... Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Mir Rahman and you're not doing no work there. So that's your three scenarios joining two suwar without any takbir. Okay. Now let's compare this to Istaadha. Here there was four scenarios. And here there are three scenarios. So what are the difference? Okay. So if you look at these, <clears throat> where you've got uh, scenario number three. Scenario number three, where you can recite um, istaaza, taawuz, and basmala together, and then stop here. Tamam. This scenario does not exist, or any scenario like it, when you join two surah together. Why? It is incorrect to recite the last ayah. Join it with basmala and then stopping here. So if this waqf was here, that would be incorrect. Why? Because you're finishing the surah, okay? And then you're reciting with the name of Allah, okay? The most merciful, the most kind, I begin with. Okay? And then you stop, but you never begin. So basmala only comes in the beginning of a surah, not at the end. So you can't recite the last ayah of a surah and read basmala and then stop. For example, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Incorrect. Why? Because I joined the basmala with the last ayah and I stopped. 
So I must continue. I must read the first ayah of the next surah. Then it's fine. Um, say, for example, um, uh, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدَرَكَ oh. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدَرَكَ Perfectly fine. Okay. So note, all of the turuq permit the above methods. Why? Because there's no takbir involved. There's no takbir involved. So it's just simple. How to start a recitation? You've got four scenarios. One of these four must apply. It's impossible to start in any other fashion other than these four scenarios. Joining two surah together, there's only three options you've got. Either you're going to, you know, do waslul kul, okay, wasl here, waslul here, so waslul kul. Or you're going to do waslul uh, awwal, sorry, um, uh, fasl here, fasl, breaking, fasl means to divide. So either you're going to do faslul kul, okay, or you're going to do faslul awwal, break the first, waslul thani, waslul means joining, you're going to join the second, or you're going to connect all of them. Yeah? Waslul kul. So you're joining all of them. They're your only three scenarios. Tamam? Okay. Now let's look at the takbir. Important rules of takbir now. How do we do takbir? Okay. Rule number one. So remember these rules. They're very, very important. <clears throat> If a surah which ends with a tanween is connected to the takbir, then the noon of the tanween is given a kasra, and the vowel of the hamza in the Allahu Akbar is dropped. For example, moko tadirin, moko tadirin, rin. So there's a tanween here. Okay, tanween. Rin. So if you open this tanween up, it will be written as this. Rin. Ra, kasra, noon, rin. Rin. So this is a silent noon. Silent noon. Rin. Okay. And then you've got Allah. Okay. So Allah also begins with a silent alif. Okay. So two silent Letters have joined together. So in the Arabic rule, we're going to give the first letter a kasra. Okay. So we're going to recite it as Moko Tadi Ril. So Moko Tadi Ril wrong without a noon. Moko Tadi Rin wrong. Moko Tadi Ri Nilahu. Okay. Moko Tadi Ri Nilahu. That's the only way you're going to be able to recite this if there is a tanween at the end. So similarly, if you're going to recite um, here, moko tadi rim when you're joining here with the basmala, but if you're going to join it with ar rahman, you're going to bring the noon here again. So. في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدرين الرحمن مقتدرين الرحمن تمام؟ So that's the first rule in regards to the tanween. The rule number two, if the surah ends with a sukun, there's a sukun at the end of it, then the last letter is given a kasra. Same. You got two iltikar sakinin, two sakin letters together. You're going to give the first one a kasra. Same rule as the one above. So here we have the example of fahaddith Allahu Akbar. So when you're going to recite this, fahaddithillahu Akbar. Okay? So Allahu Akbar, the takbir, the Allah, uh, ismul jalala, will be empty mouth. فَحَدِّثِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ تمام? And if you're reciting Allahu Akbar on its own, Allah will be full mouth. Allahu Akbar. 
Rule number three, if the surah ends with a single vowel, okay, does not have a tanween and does not have a sukoon, then the last letter remains unchanged. However, the vowel um, of the hamza from the takbir is dropped. For example, Allahu Akbar. So you're going to recite the Fatha on the Noon and join it with the Ismul Jalala. Rule number four. If the surah ends with a mud letter and the mud letter, okay, uh, the surah ends with a mud letter, the mud letter and the vowel of the Hamza is dropped in pronunciation. For example, Yarba. Then you're going to recite, you know, Allah. So how are you going to do it? Yarballahu Akbar. So you're not going to read the mud, okay? No, the Hamza. So Bad, Fatha, and you're going to join it straight to the Lamb of Allah. Note, after the above rules have been applied, it is important to remember that the Lamb of Allah Okay, will be pronounced full mouth unless the preceding vowel is a kasra. Tamam? Like, Yardallahu Akbar, Fahaddithillahu Akbar. That's your page number 67. Complete. Okay, next scenario, let's look at. Page 68. Takbir Am when starting a recitation. Takbir Am when starting a recitation. Let's quickly go through this. It's quite easy. As long as you've understood page 67. On how to join the takbir. After that, everything should be very, very easy. So takbir am. Am literally means general. Okay. When starting a recitation. So this is the beginning of any surah. So you can see the example here is of Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha is not at the end of the Quran between Surah Duha and Surah An Nas. Okay. So am any surah in the Quran except for a tawbah. So from the start of Surah Fatiha until Surah Duha, the method below is only used when starting recitation and not when connecting to surahs. Uh, as um, ta'awwuz is not recited when joining to surah, as I mentioned before. Scenario number one. So look how many different ways you could do this. Number one, you're going to do waqf upon all of it. So faslul kul. So a'udhu <clears> billahi <throat> minash shaytanir rajeem. Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen That's your first scenario. Okay, another note I want you to remember here. When you're doing the work, work means stoppage of sound and breath. You must take breath. If you don't take breath, okay, you haven't done work. In fact, you've done sucked instead. There's no sucked here. So I can't read. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So each one, I'm not actually breaking my breath. That would be incorrect. La yajuz. You must take a breath. It's not your number two now. So we're going to do waqf. After the takbir, prior to takbir and after takbir. Okay, so let's look at this now. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Breath. Allahu akbar. Take a breath. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And now here we're joining the Basmala and Hamdallah. Scenario number three. 
we can do work after the ta'awudh and work after basmala so a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem breath allahu akbar bismillahir rahmanir rahim breath Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Tamam So the place that we What we done here Waqf after ta'awudh Waqf after basmala And join the takbir with basmala This is aam Anytime Any surah Next one we're only going to do waqf On ta'awudh How are we going to recite A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Take a breath Allahu akbar bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen So we join the takbir, basmala and alhamdulillah Or awal al-suwar Fifth uh, scenario, we're going to do work in two places. After the takbir, okay, before basmala and after basmala. So this will be recited as follows. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem illahu akbar. So you notice how I've done that? Again. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Millahu akbar Millahu akbar Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Tamam so join the takbir with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Okay, next scenario We're going to do waqf only once Okay, before basmala After the takbir As follows A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Okay, that's the sixth way you can recite this. Seventh, one walk after the Basmala. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Okay, that's your seventh way of reciting the from the beginning of a surah with basmala. Now the last one and the final one in this table is the connecting all. We're gonna connect every single one of them. We're gonna correct the ta'awuz with the takbir, takbir with the basmala, basmala with the awul uh, of the beginning of the surah. <coughs> so nice deep breath. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Allahu akbar bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen So here we are joining all four together inshallah Note the above methods are according to al-ghaya Al-Ghaya, okay, which is Tariq Hashemi, okay, and Feel and Zaran and Al Kamil, Tariq Hashemi, Abi Tahir, and Feel. Don't worry too much about these names at the minute. The note, don't worry about it too much. When we 
look at the table, uh, inshallah, it will make more sense. <coughs> so at the minute, I just want you to concentrate on how many different ways can we recite? What is the method of reciting these takbirat? Okay. How can we recite these takbir? <clears throat> that was page 68 let's look at page 69 so that was basically joining the takbir in the beginning of your recitation and that was takbir am okay takbir am in the beginning of your recitation so involving istaaza now we're going to be looking at, again, Takbir Al-Aam is the general Takbir again. Between two chapters. Page 69. Okay. From the start of Surah Al-Fatiha until the start of Surah Duha. Note, since Basmala is not recited between Surah Al-Anfal and At-Tawbah. Okay, beginning of Surah Tawbah, also known as Bara'a. Takbir is also not done between them. Okay, so let's look at them. Number one, <coughs> the first scenario. We're going to do work, okay, between all of them. So, first, we'll call. So, how are we going to do that? Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ar-Rahman So broken, each one up So work, work, work Okay So done work between the last ayah of a chapter The takbir, the basmala And the first of beginning of the next surah Second scenario, we're going to join the basmala with the awwal of the surah, the beginning of the surah, but we're going to do work between the end, uh, beginning of, uh, sorry, end of the uh, first surah and the takbir and the basmala, okay? How are we going to do that? في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahimir Rahman We join the basmala with Ar Rahman. Okay. <coughs> Third scenario. We're gonna join the basmala uh takbir with the basmala only and work on the other two. So how في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن So we done the work after the last ayah Join the basmala uh, with the takbir, and then we done uh, work after the basmala. Scenario number four. We're only going to do one work, which is going to be at the end of the surah, and join the takbir with the basmala with the beginning of the surah. How? في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر Take a breath. Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahimir Rahman. Okay, so we join the takbir with the basmala with the beginning of the next surah. <coughs> Number five. <coughs> Number five, basically, we're going to join all of them. What's the kul? Every single one of them, we're going to be joining them. So how do you recite this? Remember, 
Okay, so concentrate and pay attention on how I'm going to join the last ayah with Allah. And also the Allah in the takbir is going to be empty mouth because Allah ma qabal is going to be maksur kasra. So we have to break the sound. في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن. So here we've joined all of it together. تمام. So this is again تكبير عام. You can do this between any two uh, surah, any surah. You could join Surah Yasin with the surah before it. You could join Surah Yasin with the surah after it. And you could do the takbir. And this is takbir al-am. So let's go to page number 70 now. So page number <coughs> 70. Now this is takbir al-khas, specific takbir. This specific takbir, <coughs> as we've discussed before, is between Surah Duha and An-Nas. And how do we do this now? This uh, method also applies when joining any of the two suwar, okay, that come after in shirah until the end of the Quran, okay. So any two suwar, so it could be your joining, for example, um, uh, in shirah and surah at teen, teen and alaq, okay. So any um, two uh, suwar you're joining. Note the following phrases can be used for takbir khas. For takbir khas, you could say La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar or La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar wa lillahi alhamd. You probably heard Sheikh Abdul Basit rahimahullah and many other Egyptian Qurra when they recite Surah Duha, after Surah Duha, they do the takbirat and then they continue on the shorter surah. Okay, this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a beautiful sunnah that we should always try to um, incorporate our recitation uh, with the, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. <coughs> so scenario number one. So there's seven scenarios in this as well, on page number 17. The first scenario we're going to do work on all of them. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Breath Allahu Akbar Breath بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Breath أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدَرَكَ تمام Now this Allahu Akbar we could have changed it to وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ <coughs> Okay. Oh, we could have done. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ لَا that's another two different ways that you could do it. So either just a takbir or with the La ilaha ilaha illallah wallahu akbar o la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar wa lillahi alhamd 
تمام so each takbir you can do it in whichever form you want so the first one is we're doing uh, fasl on all of them so fasl kul we're doing work on every single one of them second scenario so we're going to be doing work <coughs> on the first two and then basmala we join with the surah وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكَ Okay. Again, the takbir, you can do any one of these. Next one. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ وَقْفْ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَقْفْ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدَرَكَ Fourth scenario. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Then we're going to join the remaining. اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكَ تمام؟ Fifth scenario. Now here we're going to join الله أكبر to فحدث. Remember how we done it before? We're going to be giving the tha a kasra. We're going to be reading the uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name in the takbir with an empty mouth because it's kind of a kasra prior to Allah. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Again. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Waqf, after the takbir, then بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدَرَكَ Scenario number six we're going to do waqf after the Allahu Akbar, but we can join the basmala with the beginning of the next surah. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك So join the basmala with the first ayah Now the last scenario We're connecting all of it together Okay We're collecting Connecting all of it together So let's see how we're going to do this <coughs> وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكَ Okay, so we joined all together. That's the ending of the first surah, the takbir, the basmala, and the beginning of the following surah. And you could hear um, Sheikh Abdul Basit Rahimullah's recitation, and most of you would be familiar with him, where he recites, "Wa bi ni'mati Rabbika fahadith, la ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa Allah, wallahu akbar, wa lillahi alhamd, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, alam nashrah laka salak." Okay, so that's connecting them all together. Now, this scenario. This example that we've just discussed now with Surah Duha and uh, Alam Nashrah, you could do this for any Surah. <clears throat> for example,
قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق okay. I don't all of it من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشر قل أعوذ برب الناس So joining the ending of a surah and the beginning of the following surah. <coughs> For example, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ تمام؟ Hopefully in Shira that makes it more clear. So any two so, uh, surahs from Alam Nashrah onwards or ending of Surah Duha, starting from here, any of the two in the Mus'haf, you could join them together. <coughs> For example, Surah Qadr and Surah Bayyina, you could join them together. Surah Lahab and Surah Ikhlas. Okay. <coughs> Let's look at page number 71. We're coming to the end of this lesson. This is the last page we're going to look at. So page number 71. At takbir al-khas again. The takbir al-khas when stopping recitation after Surah Duha or the, any one of the surah that follow. So, stopping in Surah Duha or any one of the Surah that follow. So, how do we stop? This method applies when a person stops recitation at the end of Surah Duha or any of the chapters that follow. <clears throat> Remember what I mentioned? That when the revelation commenced again, okay, with Surah Duha, the Prophet وسلم, responded with joy and said, Allahu Akbar. So the takbir was at the end of the surah, not in the beginning of the surah. Okay, so let's see how this is done. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ And that's where you end. Oh, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Okay, so this Allahu Akbar is not a juz of the Qur'an, it's not part of the Qur'an. Okay, this is a sunnah, sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's look at the note here, one and two. The above methods are according to Al Misbah, Tariq Abi Tahir, and Feel Kamil. Again, you don't need to worry about this too much at this minute because um, we haven't actually gone through the each Turuk and the names and we're not too familiar at the minute. Uh, and Al Kamil, so Tariq Hashemi, Abi Tahir, and Al Feel, who do Takbir Khas at the end of each surah from Surah Duha until Surah An Nas. It is not permitted. It is not permitted to connect the end of the surah with basmala and then do work, regardless of whether or not the takbir is recited before the basmala. So remember I mentioned earlier on, you can't join 
the last ayah of a surah with basmala because basmala is is khas for the beginning when you recite the basmala you're implying that there's more to come and then you all of a sudden do a work incorrect so you cannot join uh, these two up, and I'm not going to recite them for you okay because you can't do this anyway so the way you do this Take a breath. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Same with Wamma binirmati Rabbika Fahadith. Allah wu akbar bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I'll take a breath. Tamam? But you can't do this if you're stopping here totally. For example, you're finishing your recitation. Yeah? So you're right. No, that would be incorrect. So you can't stop on Basmala and you can't join it with the previous uh, surah and stop as well. Inshallah. So let's look at this last part here. So walk between Surah Al-Anfal and Surah At-Tawbah. So basically the beginning of Surah At-Tawbah does not have Basmala. So this is the last ayah okay, of Surah Al-Anfal. And this is the first ayah of Surah At-Tawbah. So, Inna Allah bi kulli shay'in alim. Bara'atum min Allah. Are you going to continue? So how do we join these two up? What are the different scenarios? Number one is what, which I have just done. The second one is what with um, iqlab. The third is sakt with a sakun. Okay? Sakt with a sakun, but you have to do ishmam and rom. Okay? So let's look at these scenarios. So what's with the club in Allah be kuni shay in Ali Mubara and to me, no, he was a sunny. The man that's what he um. So that's the first scenario. So you're doing work. The second scenario you're doing was the second one you're doing sect. So in Allah be kuni shay in Ali Bara atum in Allah. Okay, so you're doing the um, uh, you got doing the sect. You're not breaking your breath. So you're not doing work. You're holding your breath. You're breaking the sound with this sakun. <clears throat> so, alim, bara, then you continue. Okay? So, ishmam and rom, you must do then. So, alim, bara, so that's you um, how to join the Surah Al Anfal and Surah Al Tawbah. So that completes the chapter of uh, Takbirat. Okay, so we done up to page 23, and we've also co covered the chapter of Takbirat. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at the Madud and hopefully the um, Sakt also, if you can um, cover them. Inshallah. Let me just check if there's any questions. 
Um, no questions. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. I love it when there's no questions. <laughs> Um, subhanallah. So these are basically the um, different ways you can finish a surah and you can commence the next surah. Okay. Um, inshallah. So tomorrow we'll continue. I don't want to take any more of your time. Inshallah. Uh, enjoy your iftar. Inshallah. Enjoy your food. Keep me in your du'as and keep darukura in your du'as. Inshallah. Barakallahu feekum jami'an until tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.